Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Today Brian's Logic is going to regale us with his knowledge and theories concerning aerosol, cans, oxygen, the atmosphere, and uh, whatever else. It's going to be interesting. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's light this dumpster fire and have some fun. <clears throat> Hello, how are you doing? This is going to be an interesting video uh, for whether you're a flat earther or a globe earther. I feel what I'm going to put forward here will be a kind of a different type of concept that especially the globe side would not have thought of. Uh, to do with our atmosphere and the fact that it's pressurized. You're not getting off to a very good start, Brian. The atmosphere is not pressurized. According to Indiana University and every other competent authority on the topic, gas pressure is caused by the collision of gas molecules with each other and with the surface of any enclosure there may be, like a balloon or like an aerosol can. Atmospheric pressure is different. Atmospheric pressure is the weight of all the air in a column above a unit area. That means at sea level, there are 14.7 pounds of air sitting on top of every square inch of area. That's what it means. This is a typical mistake made by flat earth. Atmospheric pressure and gas pressure are not the same thing. And the fact that due to the second law of thermodynamics, which I will explain uh, some basics on, as I haven't read all about it, but I, I, I know enough about it. Uh, due to the law, second law of thermodynamics, uh, we cannot have an atmosphere that's pressured um, with any kind of pressure, whether high or low, um, without it being, being contained, without there being a containment level. Um, because if you give it uh, the gases and atmosphere anywhere to go outside of us, outside of where, where we are, it will go there. Well, you know it would if it weren't for Earth's mass providing a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. And that acceleration acts on us and everything else, including the gas molecules. So the idea of having a vacuum of space above us uh, and a, no containment level between that and uh, the atmosphere we have uh, just, can't, just can't work. It doesn't work. And I know a lot of people out there who are global believing people and they will say, well, it's gravity that holds it, holds it down. But there's just not possible. Gravity itself ha uh, has not been has not been proven at all in any way, shape or form. Not to my satisfaction, that's for sure. Now to other people, if you want to believe in it, that's fine. Uh, but I'm not here to argue about gravity so much. Just that it, just that there is no way that gravity, because it could possibly overcome the vacuum of minus, t of minus 10 to the 17 tor that would be in what would be outer space. So I'm gonna talk now about what, 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 what would normally happen is that if someone said this to a globe believer, let's say a flat earther would say something like this to a globe believer, uh, rather than arguing the point about the uh, second law of thermodynamics, because it can't really be argued with, because all the globe side has normally, what is the normal uh, explanation from the globe side is the, is the gravity explanation. And rather than getting into an argument about what I think of gravity, um, uh, in this, uh, there's no uh, point. What I'm going to put forward will give an explanation as to how there can be low pressure above high pressure uh, 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 in a pressurized system. Oh yeah, seems to be the flat earth solution to pretty much everything. Um, how do you guys breathe like that? Um, <clears throat> as there is no way to have a pressurized system without it being contained. There is no way it is not possible. We've never seen any, uh, there has never been any, um, any observation where it was possible to have a gas or atmosphere next to an empty space or worse again, a vacuum. You know, if you look around for a minute, you can find images of Jupiter and Saturn made by the Hubble Space Telescope. And you can find a picture of Venus that was made by a JAXA probe. This should answer any questions you have. An empty space without it filling it. It, it. it just doesn't happen. So rather than trying to start an argument, I'd rather, rather than people getting triggered 
and getting angry and wanting to make a lot of uh, comments. Just listen to what I'm going to put forward and take it in as, as I don't know what you call it, if you call it a theory or a hypothesis or whatever. I think we would normally call it a pile of horse apples. I don't know the correct uh, scientific term for it because I, it's obviously not something that uh, I have only just recently been given a lot of thought to. Uh, so I'm going to put it forward and you can say what you want about it after it, but it's going to be something that you probably have not heard ever before. Horse apples? Oh sure, we've heard of horse apples before. Um, as I have never heard. Um, <clears throat> if you look at all these containers, there's different pressurized containers, like different, there's containers here, here. These are all containers. All pressure must be contained. It must be contained in some way. The pressure must be contained. You can't have it. You can't have a situation where you have containers like these with holes in them or anything like that. It just doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work for pressurized gas, but it works just fine for the atmosphere. Now, if you can imagine <clears throat> what we have in our atmosphere, we have oxygen and different types of gases, uh, and all the oxygen is made up of. What did he say? And different kinds of gases and all the oxygen is made up of, huh? And different types of gases. And we have, we have water, right? We have a huge amount of water in our atmosphere. Now, if I just come back and show you here this diagram. This is, uh, on the left here, is a new type of uh, aerosol can. This is the traditional one here where you push down on here and it creates a vacuum which pulls up and out the uh, spray. Uh, Brian, I think the cheese slid off your cracker there, buddy. There is no vacuum involved in this. Up in the top of that can, we have a pressurized propellant. Maybe it's just pressurized air. But it's pressing down on the liquid in the bottom of the can. And when we press the nozzle, that pressure from the propellant forces the liquid up the tube and out the nozzle. That's how it works. Got it? Now, they are both pressurized, but this one here is, it's, when you press down, you're pumping air underneath, which, pu which pushes uh, this up and pushes out, the, uh, out through the nozzle, the uh, liquid or whatever. Uh, no, we're not pumping air into the can. Pressurized air is already in a bladder in the bottom of the can. When you press the nozzle, the pressure from that bladder pushing up on the liquid forces it out the nozzle. That's how that thing works. Be what you think it is. Because this is the thing. What I'm going to put forward now uh, in this is going to... Um, this is funny that I actually found this because it actually... It was what I was thinking, but it's uh, this here uh, on this side where the course is. It's what I was thinking uh, uh, for the... Uh, for the high and low pressure gradient uh, as an explanation for a containment system with a high and low pressure gra gradient. It's what I was thinking, but I have some extras in there as well. But come back to the gravity thing, this will also give an explanation uh, up to a point of, us, of gravity, uh, uh, of what, what, let's say, real gravity would be, as opposed to the generalized gravity that was originally Newton's gravity, then it became Einstein's version of gravity, and it became a big load of mathematics, and we have never been able to observe this, other than dropping something out of our hands, or something, something dropping from the skull. What else would I need to see, other than two objects of radically different density, accelerating at exactly the same rate in a vacuum? Uh, so things drop to the ground, okay? We know that, things drop to the ground. But anything other than that, there was no real observation of gravity. There is no real observation of gravity. You can make things, certain things happen if you try to make them happen, like in the Cavendish experiment, which I am not an expert on, but I know enough about it to know that what happened in the Cavendish experiment, it wasn't even an experiment, it was an observation, sorry, not an experiment. Uh, what happened in that was an observation that was, let's just say, that was orchestrated, an orchestrated ex observation that we don't see in reality. You don't understand the purpose of the Cavendish experiment. Cavendish was not trying to prove gravity or demonstrate gravity. They already knew gravity existed. 
The purpose of the Cavendish experiment was to, you can read it right there in the title, determine the density of the Earth. That's what Cavendish was doing, not demonstrating gravity. So, <clears throat> take this on board. What about this? I'm just going to go down here. Take this down. There is this thing turned upside down. Okay? Look at this side here, this one here. If you can imagine, let's just say, this is us down here, and above us is the containment. Now, I'm not saying it looks like this, right? If you look at a beer barrel, uh, or a lot of aerosol cans, a lot of the pressure, the highest pressure, can be at the bottom. Uh, a lot of the heaviest, uh, let's say a beer barrel, the heaviest sediment and all that in the beer will go down to the bottom of the barrel. Now, I'm no expert on beer barrels, don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying the heaviest sediment will go down to the bottom of a barrel. Now, that's, that's a pressurized canister, right? The heaviest sediment goes down to the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, I think this explanation is getting pretty close to the bottom of the barrel, all right. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a beer by the time it's over. Uh, that's why often in bars and, and pubs and stuff, uh, and nightclubs, when it gets to the very bottom of the barrel, they often don't, often people don't want the, they often... Now, if you can imagine our atmosphere, we have a huge amount of different gases and whatever, and obviously oxygen is, is, a, is made up of a couple of gases, uh, and you have a huge amount of water. We have a huge amount of different gases and whatever, and obviously oxygen is, is, uh, is made up of a couple of gases. Uh, and you have a huge amount of water. Brian, oxygen isn't made up of anything. It is just oxygen. It's an element. It's like nitrogen or neon or helium or hydrogen or krypton. About 99% of the air that we breathe is made up of nitrogen and oxygen. Here's a list of the major constituents in dry air. Notice that water vapor is not included in those numbers and that's because water vapor varies considerably depending on where you are. Anywhere from 0 to 3 percent of the atmosphere by volume is water vapor, but on a total basis Water vapor only makes up about 0.25% of the total mass of our atmosphere. Now true, that's a lot of water, but it is not very much compared to the rest of the gas that's in the atmosphere. Whereas we need, we need to have a pressure gradient, so there's less air molecules uh, to heat up, so, and a high area for the heat to go to, because hot always goes to cold. So now I'm going to talk quickly about the second law of thermodynamics. Basically, there's a few basics, right? Rather than getting into all the nitty-gritty about it, there's a few basics. Hot flows to cold. You make a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, right? Eventually, it goes cold. It doesn't get hotter, it goes cold, right? You boil a kettle of water, it cools down. Everything hot goes to cold. Hot flows to cold. Yep, I agree. Got it. So hot always goes to cold. And pressure, let's just say, uh, uh, or, sorry, gases, right, will always fill a space. Okay? So if you've got an empty space, you take this away here. And let's say this is all gases. You take away this apparatus here. Then that will, that will float up around the air. It will uh, fill that space. Yes. Gas will flow from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure. I totally agree. Got it. Gases will fill that space. Now, some people might, might say, if you want to get nitty gritty, gritty about it, oh, well, it depends on what type of gases they may not, this particular gas won't rise. And whatever. So if you have a, a glass tank and you have it separated uh, down the middle and you have, you pump gas into one side of that tank, once you remove that barrier in the middle, that gas will fill the rest. It's just a natural thing. It's just what they call a natural law, the second law of thermodynamics. Now, there's a second part uh, to that to that law and it's it's about friction the only thing that cold goes to hot is if you dropped if you have two cold objects that bang off each other and become friction and create friction then the cold was become is making heat let's just say our cold is going to hot if you want to see it that way okay brian now you're just making stuff up you got cold going to hot what not no hell no Okay, if you were going by what science would say about space and all the rest of it. 
it would have a massive vacuum minus 10 to, minus 10 to the 17 vacuum it would be it would be you it would be a horrendous that we would be dead in no i don't even think we would last we wouldn't last even five seconds the whole thing the whole place as far as i understand would just be dead five seconds is all it would take for because uh, if that was the case five seconds is all it would take for the whole planet all around the floor to be taken away and everyone and everything done just that's what would happen because nothing can live in a vacuum uh, and uh, if you have a vacuum of that power there is not a hope so if, a, if a gas will fill an empty space without a vacuum right what will it do with the most powerful vacuum you could possibly even imagine uh, brian what was the empty space if it wasn't a vacuum to begin with are you sure you thought this out so as far as i think what i'm going to finish off here with about this uh pressure system uh i feel is the i feel i'm on the money i may not be 100 percent right but i feel i'm on the money with what's going on here if you can imagine the weight of all the all the water all the mist all the vapor we have right that is constantly pulling down the oxygen and gases from up above so the oxygen we have the highest amount of oxygen down here and the lowest amount up top so if you can imagine that that's constantly pulling down right that the weight of all this uh, 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 water we have in our atmosphere is constantly pulling down and keeping down as much uh, uh, oxygen as possible down here and the oxygen is also being uh, is also being produced down here with trees okay so they have that as well so it's constantly being produced as well so I feel it's constantly pulling it down the weight of it is pulling it down all that dampness is pulling down the oxygen there's it down here to the bottom that's why so let me make sure I got this straight the one quarter of one percent of our atmosphere that is water vapor is somehow or the other mysteriously pulling down the 99.75 percent of the atmosphere that isn't water vapor creating the pressure gradient that we see how can you argue with that but you know what if you get rid of your idea that the water is somehow pulling the atmosphere down and replace that with what's really happening, the acceleration of gravity, you just perfectly explained why the atmosphere doesn't need a container. You just explained why we don't need a dome over the Earth. Good job. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, when we say, how stupid can you be, it isn't a challenge, it's a question. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Click that little bell if you want notifications. There's a link to the Patreon. It'll be in the description. And I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. Hey Gladys. Let's get out of here.